Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dave, a professional mechanic and instructor at RaceX Academy, where we offer online courses on how to fix and maintain your car or motorcycle. In today's video, I'm going to answer another question that many of you have asked me. Do you have to bleed brakes after changing pads? Brake bleeding is the process of removing air bubbles from the brake fluid in your braking system. Air bubbles can reduce the pressure and efficiency of your brakes, making them feel spongy or soft when you press the pedal. Bleeding your brakes can restore the proper pressure and performance of your brakes, making them feel firm and responsive. But do you have to bleed your brakes every time you change your brake pads? Well, the short answer is, it depends. It depends on how you change your brake pads and what other parts of your braking system you may need to replace or adjust. Let me explain. When you change your brake pads, you have to push back the brake caliper piston to make room for the new pads. The brake caliper piston is the part that presses the brake pad against the brake rotor when you apply the brakes. The brake caliper piston is connected to the brake fluid in your brake lines through a small hole called the bleeder valve. There are two main ways to push back the brake caliper piston, with or without opening the bleeder valve. If you push back the brake caliper piston without opening the bleeder valve, you are pushing the brake fluid back into the brake master cylinder, which is the part that controls the flow of brake fluid in your braking system. This method does not introduce any air into your brake lines, so you don't have to bleed your brakes after changing pads. However, this method has some drawbacks. First of all, it can damage your brake master cylinder if it is old or worn out because it can create too much pressure or cause leaks in its seals. Second of all, it can contaminate your brake fluid with dirt or debris from your old brake pads or rotors, which can affect its quality and performance. If you push back the brake caliper piston with opening the bleeder valve, you are releasing some of the brake fluid from your brake lines through a hose into a container. This method prevents any damage or contamination to your brake master cylinder and your brake fluid, but it also introduces some air into your brake lines, so you have to bleed your brakes after changing pads. However, this method has some advantages. First of all, it protects your brake master cylinder from excessive pressure or leaks. Second of all, it flushes out any dirt or debris from your old brake pads or rotors, which can improve the quality and performance of your brake fluid. So, which method should you use? Well, that depends on your preference and situation. If you have a new or well-maintained brake master cylinder, if you have fresh and clean brake fluid, and if you want to save some time and hassle, you can push back the brake caliper piston without opening the bleeder valve. But remember to check your brake fluid level and quality after changing pads, and replace it if necessary. If you have an old or worn out brake master cylinder, if you have dirty or contaminated brake fluid, or if you want to be extra careful and thorough, you can push back the brake caliper piston with opening the bleeder valve. But remember to bleed your brakes after changing pads, and refill your brake fluid to the proper level. Now, there are some other situations where you may need to bleed your brakes after changing pads, regardless of which method you use. For example, if you replace or adjust other parts of your braking system, such as the brake rotors, the brake hoses, the brake calipers, or the brake master cylinder itself. In these cases, you may need to open the brake lines and introduce air into them, so bleeding your brakes is necessary to remove any air bubbles. Also, if you notice any signs of air in your brake lines after changing pads, such as a spongy or soft pedal feel, a low or sinking pedal position, a reduced braking performance or efficiency, or a hissing or bubbling sound when applying the brakes. In these cases, bleeding your brakes is necessary to restore the proper pressure and performance of your brakes. So, how do you bleed your brakes? Well, that's a topic for another video. But don't worry, I have already made a video on how to bleed your brakes step by step. You can find it on my channel or in the link in the description below. It's not a difficult process, but it does require some tools and materials, such as a wrench, a hose, a container, some brake fluid, and an assistant. You can also use a vacuum pump or a pressure bleeder if you have one. 
but if you don't have these tools or materials, or if you don't feel confident or comfortable with doing it yourself, you can always take your vehicle to a professional mechanic who can do it for you. They will charge you for labor and materials, but they will also guarantee that your brakes are working properly and safely. So there you have it. That's my answer to whether you have to bleed brakes after changing pads. I hope this video has helped you understand when and why bleeding your brakes is necessary or not after changing pads. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. And if you want to learn more about how to fix and maintain your car or motorcycle, check out RaceXD Academy's online courses at RaceXD.com. They have courses for beginners and experts alike, covering topics such as engine repair, suspension tuning, electrical systems, diagnostics, and more. You can learn at your own pace from experienced instructors like me and get certified upon completion. And as a special offer for my viewers, I have a coupon code that will give you 10% off any course at RaceX Academy. Just use the code DAVE10 at checkout and enjoy your savings. This offer is valid until March 31st, 2023. So hurry up and don't miss this opportunity. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.